Good evening. So basically, there's three main studios. Studio 1, Studio 2, and Studio 3. What's up everyone? My name is Augustine. I'm a musician and a massive fan of the Beatles. One week ago, I made a video visiting Paul McCartney's house here in London, and I got a lot of positive feedback, so that gave me the idea of starting to create more content about my favorite band. So in today's video, we're gonna visit the most famous recording studios in the world. Of course, we're talking about Abbey Road Studios, so let's go! It's a beautiful day in London, nice weather, kind of sunny, which is not very common here. And Abbey Road is only a 10 minute walk from my place, so we're gonna be there very soon. I look at the world and I notice it's turning while my guitar gently weeps. Okay, so we made it to Abbey Road Studios, the place where the Beatles recorded most of their music. It's actually a very busy street, so I hope you guys can hear me well. The studios are in St. John's Wood, which is a very nice neighborhood in North London, very close to central London. Also, Paul McCartney's house is here, only a five minute walk that way. By the way, if you wanna watch my video visiting Paul McCartney's house, I'm gonna leave it somewhere here and also the link there in the description. Yes, okay. The closest tube station is St. John's Wood on the Jubilee Line. There's also an Abbey Road station on the DLR, but that's in East London, so nowhere near Abbey Road Studios. So keep that in mind if you ever visit London. And of course here we have the most famous, or maybe even the only famous zebra crossing or crosswalk in the world, which is where the Beatles made a cover of their album Abbey Road. Usually this place is full of tourists, but right now, because of lockdown, there aren't any, which actually is very good for the sake of this video. But in a normal day, you would find a lot of people trying to cross the street and get their picture taken, which is actually a huge problem for cars passing by, because as I mentioned before, this is actually a very, very busy road. There's always, always, if it's daylight, there are tourists there, mm. and there are people, and it drives you mad. <laughs> <laughs> I, I curse your name once a week. Yeah. What do you think? I feel like. <laughs> also, I've seen many people trying to take their pictures crossing the wrong way across. But if you want your picture to be just like the one in the album, you have to cross from that side this way. So now I'm gonna move a little bit. I'm gonna find a place that is a little bit less noisy. I like this place a lot better and I got a coffee, so let's keep going. Let's talk about the history of Abbey Road Studios for a minute. In November 1931, Sir Edward Elgar conducted the London Symphony Orchestra during the first official session in Studio One. The studios were established by the Gramophone Company that later became EMI. So this was EMI Studios and Abbey Road was just the name of the street. It was only after the Beatles released their album Abbey Road, obviously naming it after the street, that they renamed the studios after the album, which was probably the best marketing idea ever. It's Abbey Road Come on to Abbey Road in 2009, Abbey Road came under threat of sale to property developers. In response, the British government protected the site by granting it English Heritage Grade II listed status, protecting the building from any major alterations. In 2013, EMI was not doing very good financially, so it was bought by Universal Music, which is one of the biggest companies in the music industry. Abbey Road is of course private property and is not open to the public because the studios are being used constantly. In 2018, I had the chance to study music production and sound engineering here at the Abbey Road Institute, and I was coming here every day. I thought the magic would like fade at some point or something, but it doesn't really. Like every time I walk through the door, it feels awesome. Coming back to Abbey Road is always a very special thing. As I said before, Abbey Road is not open to the public, but I've been inside the studios many times, so maybe I can show you a few pictures. So basically, there's three main studios. Studio One, Studio Two, and Studio Three. Studio One is the largest recording space in the world. It really is huge, and it's mostly used for orchestras. A lot of famous classical music recordings have been made here, and also a lot of famous film scores, like for example, Indiana Jones, Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, and Star Wars. Many pop artists recorded here, like for example U2, Kanye West and Stevie Wonder. Also the Beatles did some recordings here, like the orchestral part of A Day in the Life. And it's so big that you can also hire the place for events, like for example my graduation party was here. 
Then we have Studio 2, where the Beatles recorded most of their music, and also artists like Pink Floyd, Oasis, Adele, Ed Sheeran, The 1975, and many more. This studio has two stories, the control room, which is where the producers are, is upstairs, and the live room, which is where the musicians are, is downstairs, which is not very practical because as a musician, you need to keep going up and downstairs. We weren't allowed up there, that was where the grown-ups lived. Studio 2 is the most famous because of the Beatles, and to me, it's also the most special because that's where the Beatles spent most of their time in Abbey Road. We, we made pretty much all the Beatle records in this room. Very special place to me, as you can imagine. And I say, I can still sort of see the guys, you know, Ringo back there with his drum kit, John and George, me over here with the bass. I think I have a picture of the first time I've been to Studio 2. I was so happy. They still keep the same pianos that the Beatles used to record with. One time I had the chance to play them and that was one of the happiest days of my life. And then we have Studio 3 which is actually my favorite because I feel like Studio 1 and Studio 2 are way too big for a pop recording session or rock recording session. Um, Studio 3 is a lot more cozy and it sounds great. Here's where the Beatles recorded their album Revolver, also where Pink Floyd recorded The Dark Side of the Moon, and where Amy Winehouse recorded her final tracks. Apart from the main studios, they also have three smaller studios named the Penthouse, the Gatehouse and the Front Room. They were built recently with the aim of attracting new customers with smaller budgets, which is roughly £500 a day for the cheapest room. There's another small studio called Custom 75, which belongs to the Abbey Road Institute, where I study. There's a post-production room for film named The Mixing Stage. And there's also five mastering rooms, which if you don't know what mastering is, it's basically the last stage of the music production process where they make the track sound loud and very good. So yeah, they do that in Abbey Road. Actually, if you're a musician and you wanna get your song mastered in Abbey Road Studios, you can do it for only 90 pounds. And I say only because it's probably the cheapest service they offer. Right next to Abbey Road Studios, we have the Abbey Road Shop, where they sell a lot of merchandising about the Beatles and Abbey Road, of course. But unfortunately, right now it's closed because of lockdown, so we're gonna have to come back as soon as they reopen. A lot of people, when they come to Abbey Road, they write a message on the wall and they have to repaint it like every two weeks or so. Also, in the next door house, there's a sign that says, please don't paint on these walls. But some people are like, why the hell not? There's this website where you can see what's happening right now outside Abbey Road Studios. I'm gonna leave the link here if you wanna check it out. When I was 15, I was so obsessed with the Beatles that I used to spend a lot of time watching this for some reason. Little did I know that I was gonna end up moving to London and studying at the Abbey Road Institute. So 15 year old Augustine would be super proud. Abbey Road was literally the first place I visited when I moved to London in 2017. And I got my picture taken, of course. So yeah, if you're a big Beatles fan like myself, you should definitely visit London, visit Abbey Road Studios, maybe go to Liverpool as well, you're gonna love it. If I give my heart to you, I must be sure from the very start that you So this is pretty much it for now. Thank you so, so much for watching until the end. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also follow me on Instagram. And the most important thing is, if you like this video, please consider subscribing to this channel because it makes me really, really happy. And because I'm working on so many videos just like this one that I'm pretty sure you're gonna find interesting. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Um, well, I'm afraid that's just run out of time. Oh, I'm okay. really sorry. Oh, so, um, Bye, everyone. Thank you very thank much you. for your question. So I hope you see that I would love to